welcome this is the lecture 29 uh, dephosphorylation of steel i just last lecture we talked about the oxidation of the carbon silicon manganese and manganese and uh, in this lecture we'll talk about the oxidation of phosphorus during steel making okay there is a dephosphorylation and uh, the concept cover basically will talk about the thermodynamics of phosphorus removal and the phosphorus capacity and this correlation is very important there is the phosphorus capacity how much effective the slag is to hold the uh, there is the phosphorus into the slag and uh, how does it correlate with different parameters. Now we discuss about the basic thermodynamics of phosphorus removal and here basically in steel making as I said uh, it is a selective oxidation of impurities over iron. Here what I do um, if you want to oxidize the impurities iron will also get oxidized it is uh, natural because uh, when you when when you charge the oxygen into the liquid bath it is basically the uh, iron is 95 percent by weight so by law of mass action it is the iron that will get oxidized okay then impurity will get oxidized but if that that is the thing we have to think about that is uh, uh, if we want to oxidize the impurities and that has to be done in preference to the iron oxidation because if iron get oxidized then the yield of the process will be very less okay so we have to see that is that we want to oxidize the impurity in preference to iron then only our purpose will be served in the steel making otherwise lot of iron will be lost through the slag okay so but as i said as a when 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 you charge the oxygen into the liquid iron um, oxygen will see only the iron because 95 percent by weight is iron so by law of mass action it is the iron oxide that will form first and then then the impurity oxidation may take place if they form a much more stable oxide compared to iron oxide right if SiO2 is stabler than FU or MnO is more stable than FU CO is stable than FU then this reaction will take place because in that case silicon will reduce iron oxide to iron and it itself will oxidize to silica similarly manganese will be oxidized to MnO FeO will be reduced to Fe and again C will be oxidized to CO and Fe will be reduced to Fe this is possible if all the right hand side oxides are more stable compared to FeO and actually it is because if you before you see at from the Ellingham diagram if you see the silicon oxide manganese oxide are stable compared to the FeO even at high temperature and the CO CO is also much more stable compared to the FeO okay at high temperature so all these right hand side oxides are impurity oxide are basically stable compared to the iron oxide so e even though the iron oxide form first okay the impurity will reduce the iron oxide to iron and they themselves will be oxidized to SiO2, MnO and CO and then out of this CO is a gas gaseous product so CO will go away from the system so this reaction will move in the forward direction always and only thing is that SiO2 and MnO we have to retain these oxides into the slag then only this reaction will move in the forward direction okay so so that thing will be there that is the in the slag we have to retain them but CO uh, we do not have to retain it the slag it will go away from the system but anyway all these three oxide are much more stable compared to FeO so this reaction will move in the forward direction. Now but if you see the phosphorus reaction here if you see the phosphorus phosphorus line is this one and iron line is this this is the P2O5 line basically P2O5 line and this is the FeO line you can find this is the FeO line so we can find that P2O5 is more stable compared to FeO right P2 under standard state when they are both are pure when P2O5 is pure FeO is also pure under that condition P2O5 is stable than FeO and if it is the case then it is not possible to make this reaction like this that is if I want to do that is the P2O5 I, that not P2O5 that is the thing if I want to make a reaction like this that FeO plus P right if I want to write FeO plus 5 FeO okay plus twice P 
P two five plus five Fe. This reaction is a great no. This will not happen because P two five is much more stable. Uh, uh, much more stable. Uh, that is what is this? Yeah. Uh, there is Fu is stable, right? Sorry, Fu is stable than P2O5. P2O5 is less stable, right? Since it is upper in the Ellingham diagram, P2O5 is less stable. Since P2O5 is less stable compared to Fu, so this reaction is not possible, right? So, so that that's why it is said that is it is difficult to oxidize phosphorus selectively over iron under the standard condition when because Ellingham diagram all oxides metal and oxides are pure. So, under standard condition it is not possible because if you become more stable compared to the P2O5. Now, fluxing helps in lowering the phosphorus line under non-standard condition. Now, if I do the fluxing, the fluxing what will happen then P2O5 and calcium oxide basically if I give some calcium oxide then they make a very strong compound with the P2O5. So, as a result the fluxing will help to reduce the activity of P2O5 significantly, okay, that is possible. So, under non-standard condition what we are doing there is that 4 by 5 P, this is the reaction phosphorus plus oxygen following the P2O5 and equilibrium constant you can write like this and now activity of phosphorus considering the phosphorus is pure activity will be 1. Now, I am not considering P2O5 is pure because I have added flux. So, P2O5 now reacted with the flux means calcium oxide and it forms a compound, a strong compound tricalcium phosphate it is a strong compound, okay. As a result, its activity will go down. If its activity go down, then its PO2 has to come down because the K equilibrium constant is at a particular temperature it is constant, okay. So, if you reduce, now it was initially it was pure P2O5, so activity was 1. Now, if I flux the slag, that means if I add some amount of lime, then it will react with the P2O5 forming calcium phosphate. As a result, activity of P2O5 is decreased, will be decreasing. If it decreases, then PO2 has to decrease because K is constant at a particular temperature. So, then what happens? The delta G0, what happens? Is equal to RT0 of PO2. Since PO2 is decreasing, your delta G0 is decreasing. So, basically apparently this line, these are called the apparent P2O5 line under non-standard condition, non-standard state because when P2O5 is not pure, okay, when the activity of P2O5 is less, then this line will come down like this and these two lines basically represent the basicity of the slag. Depending on the basicity, if it is a basic, it is a highly basic slag, then the line is this, comparatively less basic, this is the line, okay. But that is the activity of P2O5 has decreased as a result this line, that is the phosphorus line have come down here. So, when the phosphorus line come down here, then P2O5 becomes stable compared to Fu and then you are able to remove the phosphorus in preference to iron. So, this is called the selective removal of phosphorus. So, for all other oxide like silicon, manganese and carbon can be removed under acid slag condition. That is the when the slag is not basic even you can remove them because these oxides, impurity oxides are stronger compared to there is the more stable compared to the iron oxide. Iron oxide is less stable compared to them, but it is not the case with respect to P2O5. When P2O5 is pure, then P2O5 is less stable compared to Fu. But when you make, when you flux P2O5, then its activity decreases and then P2O5 become more stable compared to Fu and you can selectively remove the phosphorus over iron. This is a very, very unique concept. So, if you want to remove the phosphorus, a basic slag is a must. For removing silicon, manganese, carbon, basic slag is not a must. But obviously, the silicon removal will be much faster in presence of basic slag because in silica also form a very strong compound with the calcium forming dicalcium, tricalcium silicate. As a result, activity of SiO2 to go down, this reaction will move further into the forward direction. So, basic slag obviously helps the silicon oxidation or the silicon removal, but it is not a must because silica itself is more stable oxide compared to the iron oxide.
okay but in case of the manganese it is not the case in case of manganese is a basic oxide so basic slag doesn't help much but in manganese oxide itself is a very strong stable oxide compared to the fuo so manganese also you can remove under steel making condition okay so if you have more oxidation power so if you activity is more you can uh, remove manganese in the form of mno okay that is possible and for carbon it is not a problem at all because co is a gas so it go away from the system and since co is a stable oxide so absolutely carbon view will not a problem so but if you want to remove the phosphorus you have to flux the uh, flux the p2o5 okay uh, or you have to make a basic slag such that activity of p2o5 decreases and it can be selectively removed so this point i am having this is a very important point that's why everywhere you see boa process basic oxygen furnace so oxygen you are giving but basic is important unless you make the slag basic you cannot remove the phosphorus so that is an essential thing for phosphorus removal right okay so now you can see activity of p2o5 in slag at different temperatures and the slag is defined that is the in terms of different combination of summation of basic oxide with some weighting factor different weighting factor like for co we have taken a very high weighting factor and then manganese oxide and then mno then if you and then si2 si2 acidic oxide so this is the way the slag composition with the slag composition activity of p2o5 how it varies and this is the way it has been defined and you can find that activity really decreases with increase in basicity as the slag basicity increases activity also decreases and also it is a function of temperature so so people has done lot of activity calculation at basic slag condition at different temperature effect of fu on the dephosphorylation you can see this is the reaction now this is the phosphorus reaction you can find you have to add co then only this reaction move in the forward direction tricalcium phosphate it has formed and uh, you can see one thing is that higher fu and co both favors you can see if fu increases oxidation potential slag increases then this reaction move in the forward direction if co increases then also this re reaction move in the forward direction so both fu higher fu and co both favors this reaction then what you will do but think is that if you increase the fu then co become diluted into the slag and if you increase the co in the slag then fu get diluted so both the things are there so but a higher value of one in the slag dilutes the other that is very important an optimum amount of fu should be required okay that doesn't dilute the co also too much the slag basicity so an optimum co is required for that if you want to remove the dephosphorylation maximum extent that is this is basically you can see there is weight percent of uh, this is weight percent of that is the uh, phosphorus partitioning the percentage of p2o5 into the slag divided by percentage of phosphorus into the metal this is the way the phosphorus partition coefficient okay and now phosphorus partitioning increases you can find with increase in the fu but there is an optimum if you or briefer you can find there is an optimum if you here the basicity is more that's why your partition ratio partition ratio become high is there that the basicity is increase in this line low basicity is 2.4 and then 2.8 and 3.5 basicity so with increase in basicity partitioning becoming high but at the same time you can see with increase in the fu also initially when the fu increases partition partition partitioning is increasing but beyond a certain point again the partitioning is decreasing so a percentage around 15 to 20 percent 15 to 20 percent fu is found to be very good okay uh, that is the 15 percent around 15 to 15 percent is good for the dephosphorylation an optimum if you is required and dephosphorylation now you can write in terms of the ionic theory you can write like this phosphorus and then if you you can replace by dissolve oxygen okay and the basic oxide there is a co you can replace in, in ionic theory you can replace in, in terms of the oxygen ion concentration okay activity of oxygen ion concentration and right hand side basically the Cal calcium phosphate you can write the phosphate ion is this thing basically 2 po4 3 minus in ionic theory it assumes there is the all complex anion and the anionic system is there because everything exists into the slag in the form of anions okay anions and cations nothing exists in the molecular form okay so that way in the ionic ionic theory i can represent the phosphorus reaction in this way i can write the equilibrium constant this as a ratio of the activity of product and the reactant 
and partitioning dp we can write in this form percentage of phosphorus into the slag by percentage of phosphorus into the metal and in terms of k prime k prime basically some constant time of k and that is equal to into activity of oxygen to the power 5 2 and activity of o2 minus to the 3 by 2 now what are the favorable force uh, for dephosphorization there is the partitioning ratio how do you can increase the partitioning one is the basic slag more is the basicity oxygen and activity more will be the and then optimum if you in the slag that is the oxidation potential of the slag okay and also the low temperature because k is inversely proportional to the temperature so if temperature is high then your uh, if temperature is low k is high so dp is high so at low temperature it will be favored phosphate capacity is a very important parameter is basically defines that is the capacity of the slag to hold the phosphorus and how do you define it you can see it is defined there is the partitioning partition coefficient of phosphorus divided by activity of oxygen that means it is partition coefficient is normalized with respect to the oxidation power of the slag because if the oxidation power is high dp will be high obviously so if you normalize it then only the effect of base will come into picture you can find dp by a by that is the activity of o you can write in terms of that is the equilibrium k prime square into activity of oxygen so you can find there is the kpo now is a function of basicity of the slag so the phosphate capacity of the slag is a function of uh, is a function of slag composition or the slag basicity okay and it is basically a function of slag basicity this is the kpo this is the holding capacity of phosphorus of the slag is defined by this term so it depends on the composition of the slag or the basicity of the slag so at a particular oxidation power of the slag so if your oxidation power is constant then kpo depends on that parameter only kpo depends on the basicity of the slag but that's why let us correlate this is the kpo with the basicity if we want to correlate it you can find that there is hardly any correlation but it is supposed to increase with increase in the basicity kpo but hardly any correlation any correlation no correlation can be observed here and with respect to temperature if you see kpo versus temperature there is a very unique correlation temperature kpo also depends on temperature so you can find a very unique correlation but you don't find any correlation with the basicity therefore that is the phosphorus capacity does not correlate with the common basicity this is the common basicity that is the summation of basic oxide divided by the summation of acidic oxide if i take then kpo doesn't hold any correlation what does it mean it means all the basic oxides are not equally efficient to retain the phosphorus in the slag only few oxides basic oxides are there who are responsible for retaining the phosphorus into the slag not all the basic oxides otherwise it could have hold a very good correlation no correlation at all so let us see that's why later on this correlation there is a phosphate capacity correlates with the bo bo is a specially defined basicity of the slag or you can say basic oxides if you consider only the percentage of co percentage of cf2 and also 30% of mgo that is the 0.3 of mgo percentage that means mgo is also good for phosphorus removal but not as strong as co and cf2 but 0.3 what about the percentage of mgo you take the weighting function weighting function is 0.3 only where that the weighting function here is 1 and 1 here is 0.3 so mgo is little uh, less strong compared to Cu and CF2 for dephosphorization. But you can see it is much better than MnOFU because MnOFU do not, uh, as a basic oxide, they do not have much role in the dephosphorization. MnOFU, they do not have because this correlates very nicely with this composition only Co plus CF2 plus 0.3 of MgO. And this direction, this is basically the your phosphate capacity. Sorry, this is the phosphate capacity. So you can see it is a very nice correlation and this is taken from a different temperature data and from different literature and from different and all of them holds a very nice correlation when I defined 
the basicity in terms of BO where we consider only the percentage of CO plus percentage of CF2 plus 0.3 of MgO. MgO also a very effective but not as like CO and CF2 but it is also very effective and while MnO and FeO are not very good as basic oxide. So, for at least retaining the phosphorus. The approximate dephosphorization power ratio for some cations has been estimated as this thing. So, this is this is being basically calculated from the equilibrium correlation ship. So, and then you can find that is the cation as the cation Ca2 plus is uh, 30,000 times more effective in removing phosphorus compared to the Fe2 plus ion, right. Similarly, MgO is 1000 times greater than that of FeO and Mn is 3 times that of the FeO. Fe, so Fe2 plus. So, calcium cation, uh, calcium ion is most powerful as far as the dephosphorization is concerned and followed by your Mg. The result shows the decisive role, that is the decisive role of CO, CF2 and MgO in the phosphorus capacity of the slag. So, so holding capacity depends on the CO, uh, CF2 and MgO in the slag, then only the slag will be able to and uh, able to hold the phosphorus into the slag without reversion. And this, this is basically is shown here, basically the phosphate capacity if you can draw and percentage of this, they a very nice correlation. Compared to that, there was absolutely no correlation when we used all basic oxide to acidic oxide. So, there was no correlation, but here it is correlated. So, it clearly indicates the CA, CO, CF2 are the more uh, primary basic agent or the who plays the decisive role uh, in uh, retaining the phosphorus into the slag. Okay. So, this is the, the phosphorus and uh, reference and the conclusion we can say that is the selective phosphorus renewal is only possible under basic steel making condition, right. So, you can remove the carbon, manganese and the silicon even under the acid steel making condition, although the basic slag favors the silicon removal, that is different thing. But if you want to remove the phosphorus, okay, over iron, that is the selectively to remove the phosphorus, then you have to have a basic slag. This is the first thing. Second is the phosphorus partitioning become maximum at an optimum FU because both FU and CO favors the phosphorus removal because FU act as an oxidizing agent and CO act as an basic agent, okay. So, if you increase both, it is supposed to increase this dephosphorization. But because if you increase more amount of FU into the slag, then CO get diluted. Okay, and uh, so it has been found that is the 15% of FU in the slag is good for dephosphorization. Okay, optimum. And phosphorus capacity, it is very important, does not correlate with the common basicity where we consider all the basic oxide responsible for dephosphorization. If you consider that then in that case we do not get any correlation at all with the phosphate capacity. And phosphate capacity perfectly correlates with a some uh, another definition of basicity defined by BO, basic oxide, where we consider percentage of CO plus percentage of CF2 plus 0.3 or percentage of MgO. Because these are the only three oxide who are responsible for dephosphorization. And manganese oxide is also there, but manganese oxide is not uh, equal uh, as compared to the FeO, uh, CO and the CF2. And MnO and FeO has no role to play as far as the retention capacity of the slag is concerned for the phosphorus, okay. But CO, FeO obviously plays a role uh, as an oxidizing agent, okay. So, that thing has to be cleared out. So, FeO plays a role as an oxidizing agent. So, if you increase the FeO, there is the phosphorus removal, uh, the phosphorus uh, oxidation is favored just like by increasing the CO also. But FeO's role is as an oxidizing agent and the CO role as an basic oxide as an constituents uh, for holding the phosphorus into the slag, okay. Thank you very much.